Okay, our base is laid out. I have a pile of round reed here in the water bucket ready to go. So first I'm going to take one of these pieces of round reed and pull it out and untangle it. And then take it and I'm going to fold it in half. So I'll match up the two loose ends. Actually, what you want to do is offset. So one length is longer than the other. And then bring it through your fingers. You're going to crimp the end of the reed. So bring it through and gently crimp it so that the end is folded in half. And the reason I say gently is because it's easy to crack this reed. And if it's soaked long enough, it should be fine. If it's soaked for a minute or more, it will be fine. Um, but still fold it gently. The older your reed is, the more brittle it will be. So it's good to keep an eye on that. So with the folded end, I'm going to go over top of a piece of, or a piece of this steak that is underneath. So this one's on the bottom of the pile. I'll take this piece of reed and put it over the end and down into the base. And I don't need to shove it all the way down. I'll still need space in order to work between each of the stakes, but just bring it down fairly close. Now I'm going to shift this over so that it's out of my way. Put the stake right there. Okay, for twining, what you do is you take the top of the round reed, the piece that's coming over top of this stake here, and this is now going to go underneath the next stake. So you're creating a cross in between each stake. So I'll bring the top piece around here, and now it's crossing over here. So the one that was underneath now is on top, the one on top is now underneath. And we do that all the way around. So the piece on top, I'll thread underneath the next stake. And then here they've twisted. And then I'll use my fingers to slide them down into the space between the reeds or between the stakes. So the piece on top is underneath. And then I'll use my fingers to glide them down. The one on top goes underneath. And I'm always working from on top of the reeds, so, or the stakes. So these pieces of reeds sit on top of the stakes and then I move the one that's on top underneath. So I'm gonna work around in a circle, move the stake weight out of my way when I need to. And if you move the stake weight, just keep an eye that all the centers are stacked up still. And again, the one underneath is now on top, the one on top goes underneath. And there will be a point where you've caught all of one side of your stakes and so everything is held fairly steady. And that just makes it easier to work with. So the one on top, go underneath. Okay, and then when I've met where I've started, I'm going to adjust this so that it's a circle. And when I'm happy with it, I'll continue weaving around right next to where I started. So doing my lashing stitch and budding up right up to the last row like so. So you have two rows here and they're smashed up against each other. Piece on top goes underneath. And we just continue to work around in a spiral like this 
all the way around, catching each stake. And once everything's been lashed one time around, you can start to rotate your work so that it's easier to, to get to and just gently set it and continue to work. And I like to rotate it as I go. It's easier to handle. And I like the orientation of the space I'm working on being right to the side of me as I'm working. If you prefer it another way, that's totally fine. Find what works best for your body. So I just lifted it and continue. And again, the piece that is ends up on top comes underneath. Continue working the twining around so that when you lay out your measuring tape over top here, from the center out, you have about, let's see, let's put three inches at the center and you want it to be three inches from the center on either side. So it'll be six inches in diameter. And at that point we'll stop and place the next six stakes in place, and then twine those in place. You will probably run out of of the round read before you complete six inches. So to splice in a new section of read, what you'll do is you'll weave up until you get to the end of one of the pieces of read. So here I've come to the end here and I still have a little bit of a tail on this one that I can continue working on. but. Right here, what I'm going to do is take my cutters, my scissors here, and cut right to the outside of that stake. So now it's tucked in place, and I just have a little tail here. And then I'm going to grab another piece of reed from my water bucket, another piece of the round reed, and place it right there over top and then continue weaving as I've been doing. So I'll rotate it so it's easier to get to and then place it right on top here. And now this one acts as the one that's over top. So it's going to go underneath the next one and then place it down. And if you're not comfortable just leaving it there, sometimes it helps to put a clamp, clamp it in place so that it doesn't slide out or get tugged out as you're working. So then continue weaving as before. And I'll be coming to the end of this other piece here in a few seconds as well. So we'll do that step again, splicing in a new piece of roundry. And you will continue to do that as needed throughout the twining process. So here again, Come to the end, I'll cut to the outside edge of that stake, like so, and then take another piece of reed from my water bucket, get it all out, and then this comes here. So this one's over top, bring it around here, that holds this end in place. And then I'll work as usual, pinching this down, twining it around. And then I've, I'm coming up to this clamp here, so I'll just shift this clamp over to this one. And you'll do this whenever you reach the end of your twining, whenever you reach the end of your piece of round read. So reference this whenever you need a reminder of how to do this section. 
And then, so here I have those two ends that I just added in. I just weave right over, right next to them as I've been weaving. And continue around. And you can check the width every once in a while. Make sure you get to that six inches across before um, you put the stakes, the next set of stakes in. And again, I've come up to that section. I'll remove that clamp and set it aside. And then continue weaving the top piece underneath. Top piece underneath. And I'm gonna stop here and check just to see where I'm at. And that's six inches, so three inches in the center. So I've got a little over a half an inch to do all the way around. So I'll continue weaving until I reach that six inches. Okay, so I have woven about six inches across. I'm a little bit less, but I'm going to add the new stakes in. So to do that, I will actually leave, leave these tails where they're at and grab my stake weight. So I have that handy, put it off to the side and then place my base in the center of my workspace. And I have the six stakes that I had set aside earlier. I'll get these wet again in my tub of water. And then we're going to lay them out over top of what we've woven here. So again, finding the center mark. I'm going to see where this top one is placed and place this one so that it those two create an X. So with that center mark, they're matching up with the center marks of the ones below it. Again, find that center mark. And now I'm filling in the spaces in between each one that I've had the, for the first round. So just placing that there, that one's here. So I'll put one right here in this space. And again, placing one in this space and it goes across into the space opposite and just keep adding until you have all six stakes added and you can hold it in place and then we'll put this stake weight on once they're all in place. So there's all six so we have 12 stakes in place and 24 24 um, stakes that we'll be folding up to build the walls of the basket. So I put the stake weight in place to hold everything down and now I'm going to continue lashing from where I left off. So I'll reach under here and pull the round braid out from under there. So now again I'm working from the top. And actually before we start on this I'm going to look underneath here, move these out of the way so we can find it, um, to where I began. So I'm gonna find, so this, this is the stake right here that I put the loop over when I began. And I can tell because there's just a little bit, there's, there's that loop um, over that reed. I want to put a little star on the very tip on the end of that 
this stake right here. So I'm gonna move out here and put a little star on the end there. And that's gonna inform me where I started because we're covering it up. I won't be able to see that from now on um, where I started for future reference. So again, I have one piece on top and one piece underneath. The piece that's on top will go underneath. And just like we did the first time around, we're going to start working these new pieces of reed in. And if they're, the stakes are tight, like right here, the space is tight between them, you can move the stakes that are currently, are already woven in around a little bit, and then tuck it in, tuck the twining in between them. And then keep twining around the base, like so. And I'm coming to an end here. I'll just continue weaving until I need to add another piece. And this actually is starting to feel pretty thin, like it got trimmed off or it's not as thick as the rest of it. So I'm gonna actually end it right here force that down in between and then this end here I'll trim to the outside edge of that stake and then grab a new piece from the bin of water and I'll place this new end this new piece right on top of where I left off and now it becomes the working rate going underneath and you can adjust your stake weight as you work so that it's helping you out the most. And here, I don't like how that's moving around, so I'll clip it in place with the clamp so that it doesn't move on me. And now, just for convenience sake, I'm gently going to lift this up, holding everything in place so that I can rotate it and reset it so that it's easier for me to weave. When you reset it, just adjust everything to where you want it to be. Okay, top weaver gets looped around and goes underneath. Same process as before. Just making sure to press, press the weavers down against the last rows so that they're tight. Again, I'll lift it up and reset it. It's just easier than trying to twist around and get into the space from a weird ankle. And if your twining gets twisted, you can just grab one, one end of it and then pull the other end through and it'll untangle itself. And also another thing to keep in mind is if it starts to get dry, be sure to spray it down with your water to keep everything damp. Okay, and then here I am on the second round of these new rows of stakes. So I'll continue twining, doing another row, and I'll work again twining around these new stakes for about another inch. So from where I started on these new stakes to about an inch here. So we'll extend it out to about there.
take another measurement here. Check to see where I'm at. I'm almost to seven inches. So I'm going to stop at seven inches. So I'm here. You can see my little star on my stake. That's where I started and that's where I'll want to end. So I'll do one more time around to reach seven inches and then we'll end at that star. So lash one more rotation around. And starting and stopping at the same spot is important because then the basket is symmetrical. You have the same number of rows all the way around. Okay, and when you get back around to your marked stake, that's this one here, this is where I started. So I want to end the one next to it and the one before that so that they're all ending three in a row. So this one here that's on top of this stake, I'll cut right on the outside edge of that stake. And then this one that's tucked under here, I'm actually gonna cut on top of this stick, so right there. So we have an end here, an end here, and this is where we started. Here is the inside of the basket base, and here is the bottom or the outside of the basket base. So that is your bean pot basket base. Now let's start the walls. 